Hi viewers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we will discuss about the feeder pathway for glycolysis. As we have studied in our previous lecture that glycolysis is the major pathway in most of the cells and it starts from glucose and end up on pyruvate or lactate. But there are certain other intermediates which become part of the glycolysis. We will discuss these uh, in a detail. So there are other molecules apart from glucose uh, which could be part of this glycolysis pathway. Out of these, the most significant carbohydrates are starch or glycogen. We all know that starch or glycogen is present in our liver or muscles as energy reserve or these starch or glycogen can be present in our diet as well. So it could be two type, one that is obtained from the diet source while the other is endogenous which is basically uh, produced in the cell from glucose. Then come the disaccharides which can end up in glycolysis. These disaccharides could be maltose, lactose, triolose and sucrose. Similarly, the monosaccharides as well. Uh, we know that there are fructose, mannose and galactose all are the uh, hexo molecule, hexose molecules and that could be taken, taken up by hexokinase in the cell. So all these are carbohydrates which are other than glucose can become part of the glycolysis pathway. That's why we call these pathways as feeder pathway. We all know these steps like glucose 6 phosphate change into fructose 6 phosphate and fructose 6 phosphate into fructose 1 6 bisphosphate and then glyceraldehyde and further it uh, goes on to pyruvate. These are the common molecules of the glycolysis pathway. The rest of the feeder pathway will enter into uh, this main pathway. We will see it one by one. So one of them will be uh, the main pathway which is in which glucose is basically uh, converted into glucose 6-phosphate which we had studied in main pathway which is glycolysis. So glucose is converted into glucose 6-phosphate with the help of enzyme hexokinase and of course it will utilize one ATP. So one ATP will be used in that case. We had already studied about that. But the sources of the glucose uh, could be from sucrose and of course the sucrase enzyme will act on it and glucose will be formed. Similarly, trihalose will act on, uh, trihalase will act on trihalose and it will form the glucose. Similarly, uh, lactase will act on lactose and give you glucose. The important thing is that uh, if it is a glucose come from the dietary source of glycogen or starch, uh, that will be due to uh, amylase enzyme by addition of water. So the hydrolysis process will break down glucose molecule from this glycogen or starch and then that glucose will be utilized for the glycolysis process. So these are kind of one of the feeder pathway in which the dietary glycogen can be utilized converted into glucose by hydrolysis process with the help of amylase enzyme and give you the end product of glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate which will be further lead to uh, pyruvate. Similarly, a second way of these dietary glycogen will be converted into glucose 1-phosphate. So there are two fates for dietary glycogen or starch. One is through amylase and that could be happened with hydro hydrolysis process while the other one is uh, by converting glycogen into glucose 1-phosphate and that will be happen with the help of phosphorylase enzyme or phosphatase enzyme. So glucose 1,6-phosphate will be formed and then and that glucose 1-phosphate will be act upon by phosphoglucomutase which is a kind of isomerase enzyme. So it will just rearrange the position of the phosphate on glucose molecule so it will form the glucose 6-phosphate. We already know that glucose 6-phosphate is like pretty pretty much uh, common uh, molecule or precursor uh, 
which can either go to again glycogenesis glucose uh, gluconeogenesis glycolysis as we had seen in this case so it could go either way so that is the second way of formation of uh, of a feeder pathway which enter into the glycolysis process the third could be from the endogenous glycogen we had mentioned earlier that uh, the glycogen which comes from within the cell are stored uh, from uh, the cell and that will be endogenous glycogen and phosphorylase enzyme will act on it and it will convert it into glucose 1-phosphate. One thing to remember that uh, the feeder pathway which come from the glycogen will utilize a less amount of ATP. So here we see that the main pathway of glycolysis from which start from glucose ATP is utilized in the first step while in the glycogen case there is no ATP utilized only the phosphorylase enzyme act on it in converting to glucose 1-phosphate. So it is that's why glycogen is a kind of instant source of energy. So when we are when we have a difference delay in time between two two meals, so in that time it give you the glucose and give you the ATP to maintain your glucose concentration in the blood. Uh, so in this case, one a less ATP is used in the investment phase and uh, that's why uh, at the end of the glycolysis process which start from glycogen it will give one more ATP as compared to the glycolysis which start from the glucose. Then come the third pathway. We all know that lactose is the combination of two monosaccharide glucose and galactose. So when lactase will act on it it will be converted into D-galactose as well and then D-galactose will be converted into uridine diphosphate galactose which will be further converted into uridine diphosphate glucose and then glucose 1-phosphate. Uh, so uh, if there is a deficiency of enzyme galactase in blood which sometimes happen in children that can lead to galactosemia and that could develop, develop uh, cataract in children. This pathway also lead to glucose 1-phosphate and uh, uh, without utilization of any ATP. So that is another feeder pathway. Then comes another pathway that is D-mannose. D-mannose is also a six carbon carbohydrates and monosaccharides and basically it is epimer of glucose at carbon number two position. So it will be uh, hexokinase enzyme will act on it and it will with the help of ATP of course one ATP will be utilized and it will convert it into mannose 6-phosphate and that mannose 6-phosphate will end up into fructose 6-phosphate which is the immediate molecule of the glycolysis so from where it will move on into the uh, glycolysis into fructose 1,6-phosphate, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and so on so one ATP will also be utilized in that case as well. So that is another feeder pathway which end up into main pathway. There come in another pathway. We had mentioned that sucrose will be converted into glucose and fructose with the help of sucrase enzyme. So that defructose uh, will be again uh, taken up by hexokinase enzyme and that hexokinase will take an ATP along with it so when ATP will be used in that case, we all know that wherever the kinase enzymes are involved, there will be utilization or use of ATP. So that will also end up into fructose 6-phosphate. So mannose will also end up into fructose 6-phosphate as well as defructose will also be ended into fructose 6-phosphate. Uh, so that is the meeting point for the these two feeder pathway in uh, to meet up in the main glycolytic pathway, glycolysis pathway. But the story not end here. Uh, defructose, if it is from plant source, uh, from uh, fruits, come from fruits or any other sources, that can adopt uh, some other pathway uh, with the help of fructokinase enzyme. So that fructokinase enzyme will convert this defructose into 
uh, fructose 1 6 phosphate fructose 1 phosphate indeed and uh, with the utilization of or use of 1 ATP so that fructose 1 phosphate then will be split up into glycerol dehyde and dihydroxy acetone phosphate so this is basically dihydroxy acetone phosphate I forgot to mention here uh, the phosphate molecule over here so then from here uh, dihydroxy acetone phosphate will be converted to glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate while the glycerol dehyde uh, will be acted upon by triose kinase again kinase in wall 1 ATP will be used and that glycerol dehyde will be converted into glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate so that glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate will lead to the um, glycolysis and lead to pyruvate and pyruvic acid so these all these uh, uh, feeder pathways will enter into glycolysis in the investment phase as we can see uh, the glucose formation from all these disaccharides and then it lead to the main pathway again followed by uh, another pathway in which glycogen is utilized uh, I convert it into glucose 1 phosphate and then end up in glucose 6 phosphate which will go to the main pathway of the uh, glycolysis and uh, similarly uh, galactose will also go through some rearrangement step and end up in glucose 1 phosphate as well uh, while uh, menose and fructose will uh, menose will end up in fructose 6 phosphate similarly defructose if come through hexokinase it will also end up in fructose 6 phosphate while if it comes to through fructokinase uh, it will be uh, then converted uh, into dihydroxy citron phosphate and glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate and through triose kinase uh, it will again convert it into glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate so these are all these are all the oral uh, feeder pathway which are basically uh, end up into a pyruvate the end product of glycolysis that was all for today's lecture see you in a next lecture till then Allah Hafiz